Hey, welcome to another video from Six Patterns. My name is Max. I'm Kevin. And today we're going to talk about uh, pattern number one again. Acute injury. So I'll just give you a brief history on this patient. Uh, this was a 65-year-old male patient who actually uh, had end-stage renal disease, underwent kidney transplantation 10 days prior to this biopsy. Wow. And at post-op day four, he was discharged home. He was doing spectacular, making urine, creatinine was trending down. He was doing wonderfully post-op day four. Then, post-op day number eight, he presents to the ED extensive shortness of breath. Wow. Imaging studies, bilateral diffused ground glass opacifications. That must have thrown the clinicians into a tizzy. Oh, of course. Well, we're dealing with an immunosuppressed patient. They think he has, you know, extensive reactivation of infection or something like that. New community acquired pneumonia. So they go ahead, they do a, a transbronchial biopsy. It's not really diagnostic. They do some cultures, don't really grow anything. So they say, well, this patient's dying. We've got to take him to the to the OR and do a BATS biopsy to see what's going on. So this is the BATS biopsy. Wow. And you can see why there's ground glass opacities. You might even think, why aren't there consolidations? Right. Because there is very little airspace here to look at. So we got to remember, we're always in two dimensions under the microscope. And two dimension may not be a realistic viewpoint for a three-dimensional structure like the lung, especially when you do a summation on CT of a millimeter or more of tissue. So this looks diffusely abnormal with a few areas that are somewhat spared. Yeah. And in the middle of all this mess, it looks like there's a whole bunch of complex airway channels with mucus. So maybe this is microscopic honeycombing. Maybe this is acute exacerbation of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, <laughs> which the patient was never known to have. Never diagnosed, perhaps. But if we go to higher power in these areas, you'd expect peribronchial or metaplasia in those areas, but instead we have this. Wow, squamous. Is it squamous epithelium? in situ? Wow, is that a dyskeratotic cell right there in the center, the pinky cell? Wow, this, this is becoming uh, curiouser and curiouser. Maybe we should show it to our cytopathology friends. That might be a mistake. <laughs> I think they might be a little nervous about that, but I think we can surmise that this squamous epithelium is here as a reactive process. Right, because what's right above it here? Looks to me like some fibrin. That's fibrin. That's extensive fibrin and a little bit of inflammatory cells. So we have abundant fibrin. We have polyps of organization, organizing pneumonia. So I, I like to tell people that this type of squamous metaplasia, which can be very atypical appearing, almost look dysplastic, is one of the expected histologic findings of the acute lung injury pattern. Right, especially organizing diffuse alveolar damage. Especially organizing diffuse alveolar damage. Now, what would we look for if we wanted to make a diagnosis of organizing diffuse alveolar damage or acute in organizing diffuse alveolar damage? Well, that's the tricky part because most, of, most pathologists think of diffuse alveolar damage as having one phase, meaning you biopsy the patient and they have hyaline membranes and the whole biopsy has hyaline membranes or you biopsy them later in the process and all they have is organizing pneumonia. The like what we is, might see here. Right, like this is a lot of organizing pneumonia. It looks like it's multiple stages. And to remember, when DAD occurs histopathologically as multiple phases of injury, you gotta think about drug. Exactly, because it implies, if you have multiple phases, it implies repetitive injury over time meaning they didn't have one insult, like the time of his operation, right. or one infection right at time one, but they've been injured repetitively over and over. As you might with a hypersensitivity or toxic reaction to a medication. Exactly. So we need to find a hyaline membrane, and you did. That was pretty easy. It's that easy. <laughs> so there's a hyaline membrane here, there's organization, so this is really acute and organizing diffuse alveolar damage, by definition, by the features we just talked about. So we're going to try to suggest possibilities. And we might say, first look for bugs, patients immunocompromised. Better get bug stains. Bug stains, AFB, GMS, uh, you might even do some exotic immunohistochemistry. They were negative on this case. Because you always do them uh, so, when you have a good injury. So what do you think? So the nephrologists were taking care of this patient, right, because it's a transplant patient. So I called the nephrology, and what do you think the, nef the nephrologist said when I said, yeah, it looks like you have an acute and organizing DAD. 
He said, well, that's pretty much impossible. <laughs> no, he said, he said uh, we already knew that. He had bilateral infiltrates. We know he's sick. Can you tell me why he has an acute organizing DAD? That is the big question, and that engenders a lot of consultation. Because most pathologists are like, well, I identified the histopathology. You can't ask me to also tell you the who, what, and why. Right. But actually, I, I, I like to tell pathologists this is one of the key, uh, the key pearls of pulmonary pathology is that your job is not done when you've identified acute lung injury or diffuse alveolar damage. There's a variety of things you have to look for. In our first video on acute lung injury, we went over the things. We used the mnemonic C. Deb fish. One of the features of C. Deb fish is the D aspect of it, and those are features of drug reaction. Right. Now, what are the classic features of drug reaction that you look for in a biopsy? Metabolic change in the cells of the lung. So the cells of the lung, what are we talking about? We're talking about macrophages, we're talking about epithelium, and the type 1 and type 2 cells. So here we're looking for, are there metabolic effects, and what are the metabolic effects you can see? Fine, diffuse vacuolization of the cytoplasm. Right. And I think we have a pretty good yeah. example of it right here. So what would you say to the clinician about drug reaction? The patient's on a ton of drugs. So I'd say it's an acute and organizing diffuse alveolar damage. And there's widespread vacuolization of the cytoplasm of type 2 pneumocytes and macrophages. I would say, boy, this really looks like a drug reaction. Is the patient on any concerning medications? Such as the classic hallmark, of course, is amiodarone. amiodarone drug toxicity. So as we went back on the phone together and went through this patient's chart, sure enough, at his, the pre-transplant evaluation, the patient was identified to be on amiodarone. And it was suggested that the patient stop their amiodarone Prior or prior to being listed for transplant, uh, because of the risk of amiodarone associated lung toxicity, turns out he never did stop his amiodarone and was actually taking it on the morning of the transplantation. So the, something about the transplant surgery likely triggered his amiodarone because he'd been on the drug before for years. So there, the the added value of doing things to patients surgically can complicate. The, a drug that didn't affect you before, but now becomes a problem. Exactly, and in fact, with, in, when you look at risk factors for amiodarone-induced lung toxicity, major trauma or major operation is one of the key risk factors, along with duration of exposure and dose of exposure. Right. And if the patient had stopped the drug a month earlier, could this still be amiodarone? It still could be amiodarone. Half-life is long. Yeah, exactly. So I think that kind of sums up this case. It's a classic acute and organizing DAD with histologic features of adverse drug reaction and the patient was taking amiodarone, so we have a smoking gun. So make sure you comment on the video and hopefully you'll like us and we'll see you next time.